Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. As the BJP meets in Guwahati for its national executive, my guest today is the leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha, Arun Jaitley. Arun Jaitley, let's start with the BJP's insistent demand on a JPC. Not only have you ended up paralyzing almost the entire winter session of parliament, but you seem to have converted this into the single most important issue in Indian politics. I put it to you, isn't that disproportionate and unjustified? Well, the amounts involved in this case were also disproportionate. When have we heard of corruption where the loss caused to the public exchequer possibly could be to the tune of uh, 1,76,000 crores on a higher estimate, on the lower estimate not much lower. Now if this is the magnitude of corruption and what a corrupt government can do to a public exchequer, surely this needs to be investigated along with all allied issues. Why was there an insistence to give this portfolio to one person? within one party, what is the role of power brokers within the entire system in deciding all this, how was this policy framed, how was this policy implemented and how was this loss cost? Now these are issues where references if you see all those tapes to media, to judges, to the political system, to government formation, now the health of every institution is at stake. Who else but the JPC can really investigate that? I concede that the opposition have a right to demand a JPC, but equally by that token, surely you must accept that the government have a right to either accept or reject that demand. If they reject it, why can't you accept that exercising their well, powers within their right? Well, for the last two years, we've been raising this issue. 23rd July 2009, one and a half years ago, 19 months ago, is when I first raised it in the Rajya Sabha and it was debated for over, over three days. The media was not interested in reporting it. Public opinion would not accept what we said. So is it, it rejection is, of the media that's made you demand no, a JPC? The government would not bother about it. Now the kind of protest that we had, that please give a JPC, there was an element I concede of parliamentary obstructionism, I regret it. But then, Look at the way in which public opinion, media, parliament, political opinion is today accepted that yes, this is a huge case of corruption as far as but India is concerned. But at the cost of paralyzing the parliament for literally 23 consecutive well, times, days, the entire times, winter session. At times the larger gain of this paralysis have been much more. The country has been made to realize that corruption and corruption in high places is a key issue. I put it to you that the country would have realized that corruption is important because of the CAG report, not because of the opposition well, the country, handling of the matter the in country, parliament. All these facts stated in the CAG report are a repetition of what we've been raising. And the country was not accepting it till the parliamentary protest took place after the CAG report. The CAG report merely endorsed what we had said one and a half but years ago. But the CAG report is what got the media to make this an issue of concern. It's the CAG report that's worried the country. In a real sense, well, well, it's the opposition's handling and response that's made people think that the opposition is being obstructed. Quite to the contrary. This time there has been a much larger public support behind the stand which we have taken. Yes, as I said, there is an element of parliamentary obstructionism. But the larger gains of this are that the entire public opinion has swung against this government for not acting on an issue of corruption. Let me put it like this. If you're so convinced that the government is wrong in rejecting your demand for a JPC, why don't you table a motion of no confidence, try and bring down the if government and chance your luck at if an election. If necessary, we will resort to all parliamentary actions. But don't forget, if we had not obstructed parliament, Mr. Raja would still have been a minister. The CBI would not have acted the way it did. We've put the entire process into motion. Aren't you claiming credit where it's not due to you? Should you not be giving that to the media? Should I you don't... not be giving it to public opinion well, rather well, than well, taking well, it for the BJP? Well, the public opinion and the media did not support us for one and a half years when we were raising these issues. The facts were the same and which are in the CAG. it's the CAG that swung them around, not well, the opposition. Well, the, it's the responsibility of the media to be a little more educated on these issues. They don't merely need a CAG report. These facts were in public domain even before that date. But this is CAG that actually educated the media, not the opposition. That's why I'm saying you've taken a stand that only makes well, it look That's a reflection on your own community, not on us. Because when these facts, which are there in the CAG report, were all in public domain, the issue ought to have been highlighted to the maximum. But they got even a then. credibility with the CAG. They well, got a enough, profile enough, with the did. CAG, it, which is it, why the media did. responded. It did. And if the government still does not act, then you really have to blame the government and not us. Let me come back to the BJP's insistence on the JPC. Are you really convinced that the country is with you on this? Or are you worried that they're going to perceive the BJP as something that's deliberately obstructing I democracy I think there is a strong parliament? opinion 
in our favor on the JPC. The PAC can't. How do you know that? You keep saying it. How do you know it? Well, I think uh, uh, we have a feel of the public opinion. Well, look at the way. Look at the way. Lots of people have a feel of the public opinion. The well, government does too. The government probably thinks the public opinion to them. Well, there are many ways of assessing how are the reaction. You are simply going by what you hope is the case. You are assuming it to be the case. Well, there is some element of common sense which politicians have when they deal with the people. And I can tell you, it's the Congress, not us, who's on the back. Well, you say that, but let me put this to you. Many people say that the BJP is trying to adopt a high moral ground in Delhi over the JPC. But in Karnataka, where your chief minister faces serious allegations of corruption... There is no CAG report against him. But there is a Loka Yukta has been driven to despair by his no, behavior. the Loka Yukta is still investigating the matter. The Loka Yukta is publicly on the well, 27th of November says he wished he had never withdrawn his resignation. Well, He's well, accused well, your government of unethical, improper and discourteous appointment of a judicial inquiry without consulting well, there him. There is a in commission of inquiry which has been appointed. It's well within the powers of the government. Somebody has challenged it. The matter is before the High Court. I don't think it's an occasion where a matter which is before the court, I would really discuss it here. There's nothing wrong with the appointment of that inquiry. You don't inquiry. think I'm being hypocritical? Why are we being hypocritical? You've just had the results in Karnataka. The Congress has got four out of I 30 seats. I don't think results in an election vindicate corruption. You wouldn't say that either. The results don't, but the results indicate popularity. And let me tell you, the, the Congress got nothing is nothing to do with corruption. Your chief Congress minister is, is accused of being corrupt, not unpopular. Than. The factum of corruption has to be determined by a body, not merely by a statement here or there. All right, let's leave this issue for the audience to judge. Many believe that the BJP is being hypocritical, you deny it. Let's come to a second equally important contentious issue, the determination of your youth wing to hoist the national flag in Lal Chowk in Srinagar on Republic Day. After a prolonged summer of serious troubles, why are you deliberately seeking to provoke Kashmiri sentiment all over again? Well, how is a Kashmiri sentiment provoked by a national flag? A national flag is a symbol of national honor. It's not merely in Kashmir. Our youth wing starts from Calcutta. They march through Bengal, they march through Jharkhand, Bihar. But you've chosen Yupi. to do please, it this year with please, the troubles in Srinagar so please, fresh in people's please, memory. Please allow me to complete. Through UP, through Madhya Pradesh, Delhi, they go through 15 states of India or 12 states of India and finally reach Srinagar. And somebody says, well, don't hoist the national flag in Srinagar. I think it's being unfair to the Kashmiri people to say, don't hoist it because they are against the national flag. Let me I put, don't accept Let me that. put it like this. It's 20 years since 1991 when Murli Manohar Joshi last attempted to hoist the national flag in Srinagar. In that period, not once has the BJP thought of the idea. You didn't even consider it when you were in power for six years. Suddenly, after the most volatile Karan, and violent year in the valley, why the are you bringing it up now? Idea, the fact that the idea of hosting a national flag can be opposed itself is a good rationale for a national solidarity march which the BJP youth is undertaking. Except for the fact that you are doing it at a time when the valley has been volatile. You are doing it at a time when discretion is the better part of valor and what you are doing instead but is I fanning the flames. I am sorry, I don't accept that. I don't accept that hosting a national flag which is a matter of national pride and honor can offend anyone. And if anybody has to be offended, let it be so. The country's right to hoist a national flag, a citizen's right to hoist a national flag cannot be subdued or cannot be taken away merely because somebody is going to object Arun to it. Jaitley, it's not the right to hoist the national flag nor the symbolism of hoisting it that I'm questioning. It's the wisdom of doing it at this time after a year when Kashmir has Quite seen the, the most contrary, serious troubles in two decades. It would be extremely unwise to suggest that national flag should not be hoisted. It is perfectly patriotic, rational, logical and correct for anybody to say that in any part of the territory of India I will hoist the national flag. For somebody to say don't do it. Every country in the world is proud of its flag. It's only in India that we say it will form in trouble. As political polemic that's a brilliant sentence. But you know and I know the truth of the situation in the valley. You know and I know how you're risking inflaming it, it and you're doing it purely for symbolism. I repeat that merely because people in this country can oppose the hoisting of a national flag is a sufficient rationale to march across the country through 10 to 15 states and say, let me hoist a national flag everywhere. The chief minister of the state, who until not so long ago was a member of your government in Delhi, has advised the BJP not to do it. Are you going to ignore the chief minister's advice? Well, I think the chief minister has no business to advise another political party not to hoist a national flag. He's got the interest can, of peace in his state I, at I, heart. I think, I think if his assessment of peace is 
that national flag is contrary to the peace, I dispute his country. Except for the fact that he recognizes the reality, the fragile reality of the situation in Kashmir. You're defying it and you're doing it recklessly. Well, if this is the fragile reality that people are going to be offended by a national flag, we are going to demonstrate that people from the valley also come and join us in large numbers when we hoist the national as flag. As I said, that sounds like grand polemical statements, but the paradox is under your leadership and Sushma Swaraj's leadership, the BJP has made considerable gains in public image since the elections of 2009. Why suddenly do you want to squander it with reckless obstinacy over the I JPC and mid-winter madness in Srinagar? But I think the demand for the JPC is perfectly justified. I think our attachment, both Sushma's and mine, to the national flag is as justified as our patriotism and our crash desire to have a national flag hoisted anywhere on a Republic Day of this country. If somebody were to seriously object on a Republic Day, don't hoist a national flag, I think it will be a matter of shame rather than a matter of pride. Alright, I'll let you have the last word. Let's take a break and let's come back and I want to talk to you this time about the Sri Krishna report which was tabled on Thursday as well as about corruption in the judiciary. As a former law minister, how do you perceive this very worrying situation? That's in a moment's time. See you after the break. Welcome back to Devil's Advocate and an exclusive interview with the leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha, Arun Jaitley. Arun Jaitley, let's come to the Sri Krishna Committee report in Telangana, which was made public on Thursday. Although the committee has listed six options, it's made it perfectly clear that the workable option is the unity of the state, along with certain constitutional measures for the socio-economic health of Telangana. Now, that is almost the opposite of what the BJP wants, you are in favor of a separate Telangana. So how do you respond to this key Well, I suggestion? think, I think the, it's not merely a legitimate aspiration of the people of Tam Telangana. The whole concept of a smaller state helping a developmental process itself stands conclusively established. Look at Haryana and Himachal before Punjab was divided. Today they are progressing states. Look at the manner in which Chhattisgarh is growing. Look at the manner in which Uttarakhand is growing. Jharkhand is also started moving using its mineral resource. Our experience of smaller states so far has been positive, both as administrative units of governance from the development point of view. A smaller state helps and that's the rationale for a neglected region like Telangana. So by this logic, are you rejecting the report? Well, I have not read the report at length, but my first reaction is the demand for Telangana is legitimate and the government should consider the option which concedes the demand for Telangana. Will your party formally read the report and formally respond to it? We'll certainly do that. The report has been released as you are interviewing me today. I have not had the benefit of reading it, but over the next few days we'll do that. And the Home Minister has indicated that he'd like to call a meeting of the national parties connected by the end of the month. Will you participate or will you boycott? We'll, no, we'll certainly read the report and decide our response. Talking to the government, there is no difficulty as a national party. The state units at times... So have no more boycotting of meetings called by Chidambaram? So there is no policy decision to that effect. On Kashmir, I have been most cooperative with Mr. Chidambaram in all the meetings that he has called. Except that day. you didn't attend the meeting that was called on Thursday. Well, that's the state unit which was called. They had their own form of protest. But as far as most meetings caused by the government of India is concerned, we always deal One with the One last question. You made a statement at the very beginning about how you believe small states work and they are more effective, the governance is better. Are you therefore in favor of smaller states that lead to partition of West Bengal, that lead to the bifurcation or trifurcation of it's not, Uttar Pradesh? It's not, it's, not, it's not in every state that we have decided it. It's only in the areas where there are neglected regions of a state that this demand Gorkhalan arises. Gorkhalan believes it's neglected. Would you support Gorkhalan? Well, these are all areas which some legitimate body has or constitutionally constituted body has not considered. A state's reorganization commission or a body of another. That Therefore, step is taken, that you would be in favor. Let there be a state reorganization commission if necessary for that purpose. But Telangana is one issue which has been debated over the last 30 years sufficiently for us to formulate it. So one last question. So your indication is that you would support a state's reorganization commission to take care of all the other demands for well, smaller that's states. a matter for the government to decide. S but SRC you won't formed. oppose it. You won't oppose it. No. If the government forms an SRC, we certainly will not oppose it. But these are not knee-jerk reactions that you can have to on a given state. Principally, we are in favor of a smaller state and on Telangana, positively so. All right, let's come to a second issue this week, which has attracted a great deal of concern. There have been allegations in the newspapers about corruption by the sons-in-law and brother of Chief Justice Balakrishnan. 
Former Chief Justice Verma and Justice uh, Krishna Iyer have publicly called for an inquiry against him as well as the fact that he should step down as chairperson of the National Human Rights Commission. What's the BJP's position on this well, issue? Well, I think more than the BJP, let me state uh, my own experience because the party has still not discussed these cases. And you are a former law minister. I've been a practicing lawyer. When I joined the bar, the idea of an allegation against a judge was unthinkable. This time, a year and a half ago, when I left practice to become the leader of opposition, it was almost an everyday talk. Today, fortunately, we have the benefit of having a person of very strong pro one integrity as the Chief Justice of India. Kapadia. Justice Kapadia. But let me tell you, despite that, the rumors over the last few years have been far too many. They've been disturbing. And I think one inquiry against a judge or a retired judge may be one factor. But it's about time we looked at the kind of people we appoint as judges, about the kind of people, the appointment process itself, the criteria, the elimination of subjectivity in those appointments, accountability, the process of removing a judge or taking action against him is almost unthinkable. Impeachment is the rarest of rare processes. And I think the kind of people moving around in the corridors of the system, telling you how things are manageable, these are rumors of the last few years. I don't know whether they are true or false, but they are a bit far too many. And I think the situation has become disturbing. As you know, it's sadly, it's not just Chief Justice Balakrishnan against whom there have been allegations. There were allegations against his predecessor, Chief Justice Sabarwal. The Bhushans have alleged that eight out of 16 former Chief Justices well, are corrupt. I don't do, you think, think, do you think that we need to change the way in which judges are chosen? Absolutely. We need to ch change the way the judges are chosen. The present system has positively failed. It has failed to appoint the best. It has failed to appoint. It has, in fact, the whole sub criteria of accountability also itself is not very successful. So would you support a National Judicial Commission? Well, I, as a law minister, introduced a constitutional amendment in Parliament. The Parliament lapsed uh, before it could be passed. But six years have passed since then, so if it were to be brought up today by the government, although the if government... If there is a National Judicial Commission, I would blindly support it, provided it is, it is adequately constituted. Would your party support you in supporting it? Absolutely. We were the ones who were committed to it in our manifesto on more than one occasion. We introduced a constitutional amendment Justice when we were Krishna in power. Justice Krishna Iyer has also talked about creating what he calls a performance commission, which would inquire into the conduct of judges and which would provide a platform for ordinary people to bring their complaints against the judiciary. Well, I think the in-house mechanism which the judiciary has had so far has certainly not succeeded. It's about time that there is a national debate on an alternative mechanism of accountability. So a performance commission or a national whether it's judicial a council, council or whatever you call or it. any other alternative commission, time has come to now commence a debate on that subject. So in a nutshell, we need radical change both in the way in which judges are appointed as well as how they are made accountable. Absolutely. And this can't be a hush hush process or an in-house process of the judiciary anymore. And would you say that speed is of the essence here? Speed is absolutely of the essence. The situation is grim. Arun Jaitley, a pleasure talking to you. Report are a repetition of what we've been raising. And the country was not accepting it till the parliamentary protest took place after the CAG report. The CAG report merely endorsed what we had said one and a half but years ago. But the CAG report is what got the media to make this an issue of concern. It's the CAG report that's worried the country. In a real sense, well, well, it's the opposition's handling and response that's made people think that the opposition is being obstructed. Quite to the contrary. This time there has been a much larger public support behind the stand which we have taken. Yes, as I said, there is an element of parliamentary obstructionism. But the larger gains of this are that the entire public opinion has swung against this government for not acting on an issue of corruption. Let me put it like this. If you're so convinced that the government is wrong in rejecting your... Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. As the BJP meets in Guwahati for its national executive, my guest today is the leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha, Arun Jaitley. Arun Jaitley, let's start with the BJP's insistent demand on a JPC. Not only have you ended up paralyzing almost the entire winter session of parliament, but you seem to have converted this into the single most important issue in Indian politics. I put it to you, isn't that disproportionate and unjustified? 
Well, the amounts involved in this case were also disproportionate. When have we heard of corruption where the loss caused to the public exchequer possibly could be... Now, the health of every institution is at stake. Who else but the JPC can really investigate that? I concede that the opposition have a right to demand a JPC, but equally by that token, surely you must accept that the government have a right to either accept or reject that demand. If they reject it, why can't you accept that exercising their well, powers within their right? Well, for the last two years, we've been raising this issue. 23rd July 2009, one and a half years ago, 19 months ago, is when I first raised it in the Rajya Sabha and it was debated for over, over three days. The media was not interested in reporting it. Public opinion would not accept what we said. So is it, it rejection is, of the media that's made you demand no, the JPC? the government would not bother about it. Now the kind of protest that we had, that please give a JPC, there was an element I concede of parliamentary obstructionism, I regret it. But then, Look at the way in which public opinion, media, parliament, political opinion is today accepted that yes, this is a huge case of corruption as far as but India is concerned. But at the cost of paralyzing the parliament for literally 23 consecutive well, times, days, the entire times, winter session. At times the larger gain of this paralysis have been much more. The country has been made to realize that corruption and corruption in high places is a key. I put it to you that the country would have realized that corruption is important because of the CAG report, not because of the opposition well, the country, handling of the matter the in country, parliament. All these facts stated in the CAG be to the tune of uh, 1,76,000 crores on a higher estimate. On the lower estimate, not much lower. Now, if this is the magnitude of corruption and what a corrupt government can do to a public exchequer, Surely this needs to be investigated, along with all allied issues. Why was there an insistence to give this portfolio to one person within one party? What is the role of power brokers within the entire system in deciding all this? How was this policy framed? How was this policy implemented? And how was this loss cost? Now, these are issues where references, if you see all those tapes, to media, to judges, to the political system, to government formation.